Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you so, so much for clicking on this video. I hope you all had a good Christmas. In today's video, I'm gonna be explaining all the manual settings uh, you need to record cinematic video. Uh, maybe some of you guys are looking to uh, jump out of auto mode on their camera and go into manual mode. And what we'll be doing is explaining all these settings very simply so you get a base understanding of them and then you can go out in the field and test them yourself. Okay. This is the setup I've got today. Now it doesn't matter if you're using a GoPro, a drone, a mirrorless camera, a camcorder, as long as it's got manual settings, the settings that we're gonna be walking through today still apply to them cameras. They might be in a different order or a different layout, but they're, the operation of them and how to set them up is the same regardless of what camera you're using. Now we're gonna be going through shutter speed, aperture, meter reading, and ISO. So with that being said, let's start with shutter speed and how we set that. This number here is our shutter speed. Hopefully you can see that, but at the minute I've got it set to 160th. That means our shutter on our camera is opening and closing 60 times per second. And that's what that number gauges us. Now we can change this, we can raise it or lower our shutter speed um, to whatever we require. If we raise our shutter speed to a higher number, it means our image is getting darker because our shutter speed is not letting as much light into the camera. If we lower our shutter speed, then it's letting more light into our camera. The, low, the slower our shutter speed is, the more light it lets in. The faster our shutter speed, the less light we're letting in. Now with videography, there's a rule, it's called the 180 degree rule. And it basically says that whatever our recording rate is, here I'm recording at 30 frames per second, then our shutter speed should be doubled out of our frame rate. So here, because I'm recording at 30, I can set my shutter speed to 60, and that's gonna give us a good base setting for videos. So that's shutter speed basically explained. Next, we'll be looking at aperture. So this number here where it says f6.3, this is our aperture. And again, just like our shutter speed, we can raise it or lower it. The lower the number, the more light we let in, and the higher we go, the less light we let in. Let me go around to the front of the camera and show you what's happening and why that is. As we adjust our aperture, look what's happening to our lens. It's opening and closing. And that is what our aperture does. As we raise the number, we are closing the aperture. And as we lower the number, it's opening the aperture, letting more light in or dark, uh, restricting the amount of light coming in. Next, we're gonna look at ISO. What is ISO? Well, in simple terms, it does the same as with a shutter speed and aperture. If we raise the number, we brighten the image. And if we lower that number, it darkens the image. But what ISO actually is, is how sensitive the camera sensor is to light. So as you're adjusting it, the sensitivity of the camera sensor is increasing and thus making the image brighter. And lowering it obviously darkens the image. So that's a basic understanding of all three of them. Each of them controls uh, the amount of light or how light or dark our image is, depending on the setting. Now let's jump back to shutter speed and why we set it to the 180 degree rule and why it should be doubled out of your recording frame rate. You see, with a higher shutter speed, any moving objects are gonna appear jerky in our video. And the lower the number, the more blur we're gonna get on moving objects. This is why we want our recording our shutter speed doubled out of our recording frame rate. This is quite important when you're doing videography. In photography, you can adjust the shutter speed to how much blur you want in moving objects. But with videography, like I say, the 180 degree rule should be applied to all your videos. So the shutter speed is pretty much locked off at doubled out of your recording frame rate. Here's an example of a slow shutter speed, one tenth of a second, and look at the cars as they go past blurs too much. Here we have the shutter speed double hour recording frame rate and look at the cars now much better. And 
and here we've got a really fast shutter speed and if you notice the cars look stuttery or jerky as they pass. Let's now have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of altering our aperture. As we raise our aperture, what's happening is our depth of field behind our object, behind our subject matter is changing. You see, the lower the aperture, the more blur or bokeh we get in the background from our subject. And the higher the aperture number, the more everything is in focus. So as well as lightening or darkening our image, it also controls the depth of field from our subject to the background. Now there is a whole science to this and we could spend hours just on aperture. As you see, the distance from the lens to the subject and the subject away from the background all affect how much blur and bokeh you get using the aperture. But as a basic rule, the lower the number, the more you're opening the aperture, the more blur you're going to get and bokeh you're going to get behind your subject. Here is an example of a low aperture f1.6 and notice uh, the depth of field we get in this image. And here's an example of a high aperture f13, notice how everything is more in focus. So next we're going to have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of changing our ISO. Now, the lower your ISO, the better the quality of the image is going to be. The more we raise this number up, the more noise that we're going to be introducing into our image. So the lower the number, the better the quality of the image is going to be. So really you want to keep your ISO to the lowest number possible in your settings. Here's an example of a low ISO and look at how clean the image is. Uh, we'll compare this against a high ISO. And here's a high ISO. Notice the amount of digital noise in the image. That's why you want to keep your ISO to the lowest possible number. Let's now look at our meter reading, which we've not looked at at the moment. So many cameras come with a meter reading, this number here. And what this basically tells us is whether the camera thinks that we've got the correct exposure for our image. Let me just raise our aperture so it goes darker and watch what happens to our meter reading. It goes to a negative number, meaning that the image is too dark or what that, uh, the camera thinks is too dark. So. This is a meter read and we can gauge our settings using this to get a baseline setting. If I raise the ISO, let's have a look at the number now. As you can see, it's plus two, meaning that our image or the camera thinks our image is too bright or overexposed. Again, if we alter the shutter speed, what's the meter reading? As we go dark, it goes negative because it, again, it thinks it's underexposed. We can use these meter readings to get a base setting for when we want to use our manual settings. Now what I'm going to do is muddle up all of these settings, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and give you a real world example of how to set them or get a base level so you can start using them yourself. Let's jump into it. Okay, so I've jumbled up all of our settings. Our shutter speed is at 1 500th, aperture is f14, our meter reading is now telling us we're too dark, as you, is evident on the screen, and our ISO is at 800. Now, we already know to follow the 180 degree rule on our shutter speed. So the first thing I'm going to do is change our shutter speed to double that of our recording frame rate, which is 30, so I need 1 60th. And already we're back to seeing the image. But look at our ISO number here, it's still too high. I want that lower, so I'm going to lower this down to get the best quality and no noise in our image. As you can see, we're still, the meter reading is telling us we're still too dark. So I'm just going to lower our aperture until the meter reading is correct. And there we go, that's how we set up a camera for basic 
uh, video in. So we've set that up now. So the meter reading is correct. It looks correctly exposed. We've set the, set the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO. And we've got a good base level to start working with. Now, if we wanted to, we could lower our aperture even more to get more blur on the background of our subject. But as you can see, we've raised our meter reading now. So I'm just gonna lower the ISO to take that into account. And a little bit more. So we've given it a bit more blur in the background. Our meter reading is saying we're correct and all our settings are for a correct exposure. Pretty simple, hey? And here is that shot of a very boring hat on a very boring post with a very boring blurred background. But you get the gist of it. So there you go, that's a basic overview of how to start using your manual settings in videography so you can get the results that you want rather than letting the camera decide for you. I hope that made sense to you all and I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Any, any confusion or if you want anything answered or questions answered, comment below and I'll get back to you. I'll link a couple of my cinematic videos up here so you can have a watch of them as well. Uh, don't be scared to try manual mode. Remember, you can always go back to auto mode. And we will be following this video up with more in-depth look at each of them in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification. Uh, but thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll catch up soon in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe guys.